Weatanan is more than just a given place, it's a space. Weatanan is from below Granville Bridge all the way up to the mouth of the Tippecanoe. This was Weatanan, literally means translated the place of the Wea. There were five villages on the other shore across from the blockhouse of Wea. There were two villages on this side of the river that were Kickapoo. And up at the mouth of the Tippecanoe was yet another Indian village, which was the Potawatomi. We welcome you as the Wea Indian tribe. We are very proud and honored to be here upon our ancestral land give honor to our ancestors. My Indian name is Shole Pei Pang Gamo, which means silver fox. I am a Wea descendant. Our village was on the south side of the river on the Wea Plains. This is our homeland. And how long have we been coming This is here? our eighth year doing the village. Uh -huh. And I've been coming out here with my father since I was probably 10 or 12. We would have our father and daughter day and we would uh, just go from one end to the other end east and east and west south and north <laughs> we were a bit more spry then we could run uh -huh. <laughs> so uh this was our time that we spent together and also be able to uh see what the feast was like and uh, i told her i said wouldn't it be great if we could be a part of the feast of the hunter's moon and be able to come and uh camp out here on our ancestors' land. And represent our people here, so. And so we're, we're able to do all of this, and it's quite an honor. May the Great Spirit send his choicest gifts to you. May the Sun, Father, and Moon, Mother shed their softest beams on you. May the four winds of the world blow gently upon you and upon those with whom you share your heart and home. Aho! Our Indian heritage is dying out, and it's important for people to know that Indians were here and thriving a long time before there was contact with the uh, Europeans. The French and the Indians reached an early accommodation. All the French wanted was the opportunity to trade and have a little place called home. They weren't particularly interested in uh, extracting the title to the land from the native people. And I think that was one of the cultural features that allowed the French to get along so well with the native people. The French could not get the Wea to relocate up to Detroit, so they came down here instead and built the fort and uh, established a garrison of some 25 soldiers, which was pretty, a pretty sizable garrison uh, in those days. Established by the French in 1717, Fort Wiatnan was the first European settlement in Indiana. Wiatnan was a trader's town, probably had a dozen houses inside the town that were combination homes and warehouses where the traders could keep their goods, and it was all surrounded by a 10-foot stockade. Uh, about 120 feet by 160 feet. So it wasn't a, uh, an impressive uh, feature on the landscape, uh, but it was important because it represented uh, protection and a refuge for travelers up and down the river, and it was home for uh, native people. We're the Tippecanoe Ancient Fife and Drum Corps. This is the uh, representation of the Roughly 1755 French Marines, which would have been the military forces garrisoned here by the French to protect the trading business with the Indians. The group has always been in Lafayette. It was kind of cooked up uh, around a campfire here between uh, Bill Baugh and Jim Smith. You know, Bill said something like, you know, what we really need is we could use some music. And Jim said, okay. And the next year he came out with, I believe, they called it at that time the Tippecanoe Drum Band or something like that? I'd never seen or even heard Fife and Drum, but I knew we'd like a Fife and Drum Corps. <laughs> You 
you know, this wasn't all love and games out here. Um, this was rough. And uh, the great adversary of the French were the British and the American traders. We don't know how long the fort actually was used as a fort, uh, apart from the fact that following the French occupation, prior to the, the uh, French and Indian War, uh, the French kept a garrison there constantly, and then the British sent a garrison there temporarily from about 1762 uh, until sometime later in 1763. Defeated by the British in the French and Indian War, France lost almost all her holdings in North America, and this post on the Wabash passed into British hands. Lieutenant John Butler and a detachment of Rogers Rangers brought the flag of Great Britain to Wiyatanan. 42nd Royal Highlanders Band of Music. In 1765, Wiatanan was the site of a council between British Indian agent George Crowan and Chief Pontiac. Here they negotiated a preliminary treaty which ended the war between the native peoples in this region and the British. Although Wiatanan and the nearby Wia village remained intact, the fort was never again re garrisoned by British troops. People didn't know to whom they owed loyalty. They originally were French and owed a loyalty to the French king, uh, yet they remained in, in the area when the English took control after the French and Indian War. They still considered themselves Frenchmen, but they answered to an English king. And then after the Revolutionary War, the English king's claim was snuffed out, and yet they weren't used to calling themselves Americans because they were French people to start with. After the French and Indian War, descriptions of the Midwest were flowing back to the east and uh, people were salivating to come west and get these rich bottomland farms and uh, become wealthy farmers. So there was a, a, an intense pressure asserted through the U.S. government to clear the Indian uh, title to these lands and transfer it to uh, their new citizens of the United States. Since 1978, my father and I, we uh, do the archaeological interpretation booth uh, here at the feast, and half of the booth is dedicated towards the prehistory of the Native American cultures that occupied Indiana starting at uh, about 10,000 BC um, up until the uh, European contact period around uh, 1600, 1700 AD. And the other part of it is dedicated to uh, the the artifacts and the displays and the history of Fort Wiatnan and the archaeological investigations at Fort Wiatnan that took place from the 1960s through the late 1970s. Well before my time, uh, my father was interested in the in the history of uh, Fort Wiatnan and the Native American prehistory of the area, um, which involved um, him uh, doing some work on the lo locating the original site of Fort Wiatnan. I visited the Tippecanoe County Historical Association and the collection of documents that a man named Richard Weatherill had put together. And among those documents were several that located the, f the fort, the uh, French fort called Wiatanon, uh, 70 yards north of the north bank of the Wabash River. And also among the documents was uh, a copy of the minutes from the uh, 1896 meeting of the Indiana Academy of Science. And in that document, they described coming on a picnic out to where we are now, and after the picnic, taking a walk to the west along the river. About a mile from here, they discovered uh, fragments of large kettles and trade goods and gun locks and broken pipes and all kinds of debris that would be a clue to the uh, location of a, a European settlement. Uh, so using those guides, I, f I found the site in 1966, and eventually in the winter of 67, uh, after wading up to my, my armpits in Wabash floodwater, did a test trench on the site and discovered the site was very deep, uh, approximately three and a half feet, 
uh, and had uh, right contents of what I interpreted to be a hearth and, well, and building stones that would not normally be used by Native American people. Uh, so I showed the results of that to Dr. Jim Keller, who was then the state archaeologist here in Indiana. And he was also the chairman of the anthropology department at Indiana University. And he organized and uh, helped to get funding for the first archaeological field work in the summer of 1968. With all the plans in place to do the archaeology, no one told the tenant farmer not to plow the site. And unbeknownst to us, uh, he had purchased a new tractor and a new plow which allowed him to plow about three inches deeper than the site had ever been plowed before because the, the, the site had been farmed for about 100 years before that. The new plowing down deeper turned over material that hadn't been disturbed before. And when I saw it, I was kind of heartbroken that it happened, but then uh, also, you know, make lemonade if you got a lemon. Uh, we took, we got an airplane ride the next morning, the next afternoon and flew over the site with uh, photographic equipment and recorded what we could see. Is it this photograph down here? This photograph yeah, right yeah, here yeah. It shows you the perimeter of the, the ash area and the soil that represents uh, probably uh, the residue of the, the town that was burned in 1791 by Charles Scott uh, at the head of the Kentucky militia. When I was in fourth grade, I learned in pioneer days everybody was barefoot and basically wore rags, but we found jeweled uh, shoe buckles in the dig. We found beautiful, the finest china you can find in Paris. So that dig somewhat altered our perception of how life was at it we ought not. So the feast has been constantly improving in its interpretation.